Hi, I'm Mike Kennedy, and I'm going to prison, but as a volunteer. Uh, here's our two little booklets. We have, I went to a training, and uh, so, of course, we have a volunteer handbook. They, uh, they're able to do all kinds of programs at the prison that they normally wanted because they don't have the, the funding and the resources to hire people, so volunteers fill in that gap. There was a, uh, this training I went to, there were about 20, well, I think that there might have been 25 people there that were being trained, and these were different people, you know, like mine was for this, this Catholic thing that we're doing, there were people for arts and crafts there, people from yoga, alcohol, AA, <laughs> Alcoholics Anonymous, and something to do with arts and crafts, so there were all these people and they, you know, they would respectively go to their separate programs and provide, you know, different services and things for uh, people that incarcerated. So uh, it was really interesting. They went into, a, spent quite a bit of time talking about uh, maintaining a, a boundary between you and the inmates so that uh, neither one could get hurt by it. Uh, they spent a lot of time talking about uh, being taken advantage of the volunteers because you know you're in there you're probably a soft touch anyway if you're going into prison to help out and uh, some of these people are really good at manipulating people and they have this real you know all those sexual harassment videos you work, watch at work well they had something similar to that and uh, but they backed it up with these little clips while they were doing the of this woman talking about that this scenario had happened to her and so I think the, the reenactment was specifically about this woman. <coughs> and what has hap happened, she's volunteering in the prison so many days a week or whatever. And she's talking to one of the staff members about she's having trouble with her marriage. So uh, an inmate overhears this. So he strikes up a conversation that pretty soon he's telling her what a wonderful woman she is. and. You know, keeps going on, he buys her a candy bar, buy, you know, gets her a card, and all these different things, till eventually they have this, you know, romantic relationship where uh, she's getting what she thinks she's getting what she needs from him, rather than the husband, who's become a little distant for whatever reasons. And uh, so eventually uh, she buys drugs for him and brings him into the prison and she's arrested and she herself ends up in prison. And, you know, like I say, they had this person that, you know, one of those things where their face is blacked out and stuff, but talking and evidently it did happen to her. So uh, they talked a lot about that, uh, not being taken advantage of, keeping that boundary there. But the boundary is also there to protect uh, prisoners too. Uh, there's a uh, law that was, put in effect, I guess the president signed it in 2003, one of the Bushes, um, and it's called PREA, the, not the car, P-R-E-A, Prison Rape Elimination Act. And it obviously is about that, but it's also about any type of sexual harassment and everything. It's interesting to note that no sexual relationship is considered consensual because you have authority, even as a volunteer, over that uh, that that prisoner to some effect, to some extent. So they deem it impossible for the person to give full consent because of this power relationship that exists. And uh, you know, I think that's a good thing. And uh, they had all these things talking about what you would share, what you wouldn't share. Like we're not even supposed to tell uh, the inmates what kind of car we drive. Uh, you know, when we're going on vacation, I guess there were cases where people said they were going on vacation. These people contacted someone on the outside and their houses were robbed. Uh, different stories like that. <coughs> and they said they were, <coughs> they said they were, uh, my mouth is dry. They were giving the worst case scenarios. But this, this boundary uh, you have to maintain for your protection and for their protection. And uh, it sounded like a really, really good idea. Uh, 
the uh, just kind of fascinating to find out. Listen to this. This is my, will be you know I've visited people in prison or jail, but I've never you know been in there volunteering or or uh, service serving. I, I went into this prison once. Someone was there doing a Bible study once. So older woman, and she had asked me to come in and take pictures of the group, which you know I did. But that was my that's the only time I've ever been in that facility. But uh, it'll be interesting to see to experience that. And uh, it was funny one time the person was, you know, people were asking all these questions. And something came up about prison food. And she said, the person giving the training said, well, it's edible. And she sa said, you know, they're not trying to necessarily make this a vacation for these people. It's supposed to be unpleasant to a certain degree. You're not supposed to want to come back. But uh, I just thought that was funny in relation to the food. And uh, one of the things that was interesting too was they said they do these assessments on the people at all these different kinds of levels. But one of the main thing is that they say if they get someone in there that doesn't have a GED or high school uh, diploma, generally the focus of their whole stay there is going to be getting them to get that to get that GED uh, so that then when they go back out again they'll be more equipped to uh, you know for the job market and things they have exit programs and all these different things there's one building there even where people are in uh, it's more like house arrest I guess to some degree they dress in regular clothes they go out to work or some type of program, but then they come back to that building at night. So uh, that's a really super minimum uh, security facility. But then there, there are, I think they said there are like uh, 20 people that they're more in a real lockdown situation where, because they're, you know, they're, they've been proved to be a danger to themselves or other people. But the rest of the prison is more of a minimum security uh, place. But uh, it's, it was interesting just being exposed to this whole different world. And uh, this this prison is constantly in the state of flux right now. There's even a construction office there. So they're pulling down buildings, building new ones, different things. Uh, this is the faci only facility where women are housed in, uh, in prison in Maine. And they're going to be uh, <coughs> going to another facility and they're going to, uh, this is only going to be for men when they get done, I guess they're building a new facility for the women or whatever. But uh, it's nice to think that you could go in, you know, and uh, do something for these people that might positively impact them and uh, might lead to the fact that they, when they leave that facility, uh, they'll have a better chance emotionally or physically job-wise and different things with all these programs of not returning again. So uh, that's what really I think what the whole, the whole prison experience now is geared for, especially in these more minimum security prisons. You're, you're more focused on, since the people are not dangerous and not trying to escape all the time and do all these other crazy things, uh, uh, you can be more focused on uh, them being integrated back into society and have the tools where they won't necessarily fall into the into crime again and then return. Tell me what you think. Bye.